Hi everybody, this is Robin Kurt with RC Overstock, and we want to take a couple minutes today to talk to you about internal battery or battery internal resistance. Rob's uh, favorite subject. My favorite subject, yeah. Uh, what is it? That's a good question amongst a lot of people. Um, I think it's become a more prevalent question, or it's been brought to the forefront more by the FPV racers. They seem to be paying more attention to it than most of us. Uh, for whatever reason, and that's great, uh, knowledge is power, right, Kurt? That's right. But oop boom Anyhow, um, <laughs> the question is, you know, is it something that the average modeler um, needs to worry about? I, I, I don't know much about it. I know how to charge a battery safely. I know how to do a discharge it safely. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're going to do is uh, we've compiled a list of about five questions based on what we've been hearing from, from modelers, uh, questions we've been asked to kind of take the, the, the mystery out of uh, this all of a sudden new way of checking out lipos. My goal is to give them something they can use. Exactly. Something they can actually, it yes. actually benefits them versus all of the hyperbole about internal resistance yes. and arguments. So and with that said, let's jump into it in a very layman's terms, okay. Kurt, so layman's people terms. can understand. What is battery internal resistant? Is it the C rating on a battery? Yeah, the batteries are rated for uh, by the manufacturer for a, a particular discharge mm -hmm. rate. And as we see, 35, 40, and 55s, and 70s, and you know, 80s, and um, at the very core of that is the internal resistance. It, it, that's how it's based on is its ability to not resist giving up its its energy, but to give it freely. Okay. The lower the internal resistance number, the more willing it is to give it up to you. Give it up to you. you, you know, right. Give up your power plant. So, I'm, I'm power hungry. Give it to me, and the battery just pours it out. Um, and then also it, receive energy as well because yeah. we have to charge these things and there's charge ratings and you saw early old school days lipos 1c don't charge over 1c it'll cause yeah. a fire and then it was like 2c and then it was 5c and yeah. you start seeing these batteries go up as the chemistry matures greater discharge rates greater charge rates but that's what we're using 35 40 and 50 and 70 and okay. 25 and everything else right. that we see out there uh and then what is internal resistance what does it look like let's go ahead and run it on this pack we've got a little sausage here um, this guy is ready for discharge and disposal, would you mm -hmm. say, Rob? Yes. Um, yeah, so his IR is probably going to be a little bit higher than what it would have been when it was uh, uh, younger and newer. So we're going to check the IR here real quick. Um, the HiTech X2AC Pro checks it. Um, it's just a feature in its, in its programming function. We're going to go ahead and enter into that and we get some numbers. Okay, we've got 5, 6, 6, and 5, Rob. Write that down. 5, 6, 6, and 5, uh, and that's measured in milliohms is the way it me measures our uh, written zero resistance. So. Uh, I'm going to do something for, for everyone's benefit here while we continue to talk through here. So All right. I brought my, I brought my uh, frozen lunch pail with me. That's great. And we're going to stick great. this in the baggie. Sure, uh, and, uh, vegan lunch there? My, <laughs> it's very vegan. It's, it's non-GMO too. No gluten. Yeah. Take your pick. It's all there, man. It's healthy. All Good right. old agua. This kind of uh, is a redundant question uh, yeah. at this point right now, but we'll say it anyhow. How can I check my battery's internal resistance? Now, I think the key word, Kurt, is how can I check my battery? The As a hobbyist, hobbyist how you're can just I sitting check? there and all you got your batteries, you got your charger, you got your vehicles or whatever, and your charger has the IR checking feature, that's how you check that's it. That's how you check it. Um, Good answer. You can go all sciencey on it with a multimeter and Ohm's Law and putting a resistor and all this other stuff, but that's a, you go out and search Google. There's tons of instructions out there. And... Uh, and be very suspect of the results because you're working with even more variables than you have with your good old trusty dusty charger. Yeah. So. Next um, question. My charger can check IR. What do the numbers mean? What's a good number and is it accurate? Okay. Those, that can kind of be summed up really with one answer if you think about it. Go ahead. Because what do the numbers mean? Good question. Mm -hmm. You know, what do they mean if you have nothing to base them on? Okay. Yeah. All right, is it a good number? Again, if you have no baseline to start with, any number can be a good number if it's always the same every time. Yep. And is it accurate? It's going to be as accurate as these chargers are, are going to allow, allow it to be, basically. Right, the tolerance these are of the not, ICs and stuff like that are going to These gonna, are not thousands are of influence. dollars worth of sensitive equipment that can No, it's non-calibrated equipment. Exactly. As far as just a basic ohmic resistance test, probably does a pretty decent job. Sure, um, sure. You know, acceptable for what our purposes are. But... So, to sum all that question up, you've got a lot of variables here. You've got resistance, and there's a very real-world case, uh, a real-life case, where a manufacturer sold a battery to an FPV racer. Um, he loved it. He's like, oh, my gosh, this thing's ripped. I'm just I'm screaming. It's never flown this well. And then he went back for some reason, put it on his charger, did an internal resistance check, and was like, whoa, 
I'm getting higher numbers on my old battery on this one. This brand new one that, you know, the the mallet's hitting him in the head. This thing's kicking butt. It's the best battery you've ever put in your in your yeah, but quad. A reading he got. But a reading is like, whoa, bad. red flag, something's wrong. This this battery's bad or something wrong with this battery. He gets back to the manufacturer. The manufacturer's like, you shouldn't be getting that higher resistance off of it. But they're kind of stuck in that rift too. Well, they're sure. sitting there going, oh, this stuff's uncalibrated. Who knows what tests are used? Blah blah blah. Yeah. blah. And he's got a, a user that's seriously concerned that he has a problem with his battery. They yeah. send the battery back in. It turned out to be the connector. <clears throat> the balance lead connector is a crimp style connector that they got to run from their supplier that had a little higher internal resistance on the connector. Has yeah. no effect on its ability to produce sure. all the current it's rated for, yeah. to charge properly, to live long, to function. 100% fine battery. This is just a, this is a, this has a very specific function that's to balance charge and discharge. Yeah. It's not there to check ohmic resistance. That's just something you can do through it. Yeah. So, the only problem was that little connector yeah. for a perfectly fine battery. So, have, again, that was somebody that just kind of went fanatical about sure. it. Sure. Um, how can you check it? What do the numbers mean? The numbers relatively should be low. I mean, we we took a brand new Elite series here, um, threw it on the Thunder Power uh, uh, checker and and also the X2. It got a one milli ohm variance between the two of them, but it was one and two is yeah. what it was showing which is just, it's down there. That's good. I mean, that's fine for a brand new battery, and you'd expect it out of a 55C pack. Um, uh, but you've got variance between the chargers, so what can you use of the numbers? We're trying to get a line on a dipstick, and the dipstick doesn't have any writing on it. Yep. They're dipping into the battery. Ohmic resistance. Brand new pack. It's a healthy pack. Draw your line, and then measure from that point forward using the same product. Oh, scared you. Oh, yeah. Using the same materials, and yeah. now you've eliminated variables. So go ahead. Sure. I don't want to kill the next question, Robert. All right, well... Let's uh, see if you did. Mm -hmm. When I check my battery's IR after a run, it's lower than when I check it at home in my shop. Why? Well, I, you know. No, actually, I can, yeah, this is what the, yeah. That's what this guy's for. That's, that's kind of a, um, that's kind of a question you don't want to overthink. I mean, stop and think about the question itself. After I run it and when it's at home, you're obviously working with two different. What's your variable? Your variable is your temperature. There you go. So, yeah. have you got our numbers we checked this with? Earlier? Yes, I do. Let's do another little check now. It's been sitting for just a couple of minutes. In, uh, First, we have to yell over the fan on this thing. Yeah, it won't come through that bad, I don't think. So let's go back to our battery resistance. And what do we have? Written Can't down. Can't read it. Oh, written down, we have 5665. <laughs> How about 7, 8, 10, and 8? There you go. So if you're looking at a battery that starts off with a 1 milliohm rating, or 1 milliohm uh, internal resistance, and you write that down as your baseline, and then it's it's a cold day outside, yeah. And your battery's 10 degrees or 20 degrees colder, and you plug it in, and you do same charger, same balance, where you did everything right, and the battery's at the same voltage, which you should always do as well. It's less critical on uh, lithium than it is nickel. Uh, in fact, it's pretty much non-existent. The the uh, resistance variance over over a state of charge, except from zero to 30 percent, which is down below where we work. Um, you're sitting there with the battery at the same voltage, same, and, and you hook it up, and and you get these ridiculous numbers. Man, this thing's only run it like five times. I went from one milliohm to five milliohms in a cell. Here's a problem. No, massive influence on temperature. Sure. Massive influence on temperature. So, um, and you see that just putting it for the short time we were on video, it jumped that much in internal resistance. And what's the real world of that? You go out on a cold day and try flying. Yeah. And your power plant just got cut in half. You're like, sure. Mm, it barely gets yeah. off the ground yeah. until it runs for a while. And then the chemistry gets a little excited. It's giving out energy yeah. and it brings up its internal temperature a little bit. And then, you know, it starts coming back. Yeah. Keep your packs at, you know, room temperature, you're going to get better results. But temperature has a huge influence on it. All right. Should I check my battery's IR at full charge or after I've run it for a while? Kind of it doesn't have a big impact. What you want to do, um, there's a slight, very uh, subtle, uh, and, and I even question whether or not it showed up, show up under an ohmic resistance testing, variance between um, state of charge or, you know, um, internal resistance that it relates to state of charge, yeah. empty battery, full battery. Uh, you know, more resistance at full, more resistance at empty. Nickel is very susceptible to that. You'll see a massive swing, massive variance. Uh, with lithium, it's pretty, it's pretty flat. Yeah. Um, but to be smart, eliminate all the variables. Use the same charger, use the same balancing board. Make sure your battery's at the same temperature every time you IR check it and at the same state of charge. And now you've done the right thing from the junior scientist approach and you've created a baseline that now gives you usable numbers. Correct. Our dipstick. A dipstick. Just gave you a vehicle, there's no markings on a dipstick, you dip it, no up. I, I, I tell you it's up to full, Rob, yep. oil's full. You're going to mark it. That's the least you can do is mark it, and then when the oil's <clears> down, say, well, it needs oil. Yeah. We're going to use the same approach here on uh, internal resistance. All right. Well, last question is, I have three identical batteries. Two of them show similar IR, but the third one is much higher. 
They all run the same in my car and I can't tell a difference. Should I consider the high IR battery bad and stop using it? I'll answer that just uh, uh, by saying no. Yep. No. No. Just because one IR, one battery's IR is different than the other two doesn't mean that it's a bad battery. You know, that's a classic example of a question spawning multiple questions. Well, it is, you yeah. Know? I have three identical batteries, two of them show similar IR, but the third one, is, has it always been showing different IR? Well, that's it. What's your baseline? What's your Was baseline? it like that What's when you What's higher start? IR? One milliohm? Yep. I can get that between different chargers. Did they use the same charger yeah. to test it every time? A lot of questions there. Hopefully, you've kind of, you've got to the point where you can answer that question yourself. Exactly. It creates more questions. Okay, yeah. I mean, I want to help you out, but did you use the same charger? Did you yeah. use the same balancing board? Was the temperature the same? Did you baseline it when you got the pack brand new? Is the variance one milliohm? Is it two milliohms? Is it did, 10 have milliohms? Have you noticed a difference, a, a decrease in performance yep. of that battery over the t length of time you've used it? If the question is, should I stop using it, or should I contact the manufacturer for a warranty replacement, I'd have a different answer to that question, yeah. too. Yeah. If, if you bought three batteries and one has a 15 milliohm resistance on all cells and the others have a 2 or a 1 milliohm there, resistance, yes, there's a difference. probably something going on. Yeah, exactly. Probably yeah. should call the manufacturer. Yeah. If this is an older battery you've got, it shows no signs of puffing, of swelling, uh, you know, cell curvature. Uh, it's getting good capacity. It's not getting excessively hot. When you're, I mean, it's not showing any anomalous yeah. behavior, physical attributes or behavior during running. Run it till it's dead. Keep running it. Yeah. Use it. Yeah. What's the harm? Exactly. If it especially if it performs like the other ones, it could just have an inherently high. Oh, what it could have. We talked about well, this. Well, it could too. be the connector. It could be the connector. It could be. You know, yeah. you're out there, you're out there dipping this thing in, in pond water or yeah. creek water, running it in a vehicle, and this this battery's it's commando, dude. It's out there. The, the yeah. connector is. It's not even you know pushed into another connector. You could have grit and minerals and yeah. oxidation in that connector, and that's why it's giving you. Yep. So th that question actually spawns more questions. It does. But well, it does. Yes. Hopefully, everything preceding it gives you the ability to answer that for yourself. Or not even ask it. Or not. Well, Be well, I'm just saying. There's no that such point, thing as a stupid question. No, no, no. But I'm not saying really that. I'm saying ones. up to that point, you shouldn't have. Yeah. You shouldn't have to ask that question because kidding. you're going to have the information already. Yeah. You yeah. know, you're basically relying on a connector. This is your only way of, of checking it. Period. Yeah, so like this one this goes to the main lead too, but it's... Yeah. If this is compromised, you don't have any way of getting in there and figuring it out anyhow. Mm -hmm. So Your individual cell resistance is reported yeah. off that connector, so... So, to sum this up... So, what my, have we learned? Well, from, from my perspective, what I've learned is I still don't care anymore about IR, you know, internal resistance mm -hmm. than I did before. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way or to be a smart aleck or anything else. For me personally, I, I don't want to take the hobby to that level to where I'm actually uh, going to obsess over the IR. Yeah. What I worry about is if I have two batteries and they both perform the same all the time and I've seen no difference or drop in performance or, or heat change or, or discharge or anything, those batteries are fine in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, if I want to go ahead and take it a step farther and say, okay, I'm going to start checking the IR. Oh my gosh, this IR is not the same as the other one. There's got to be a problem. Yeah. Then I've now created a problem that wasn't there. Exactly. So yeah. that, in my opinion, take IR as far as you want it to, but for the average person, if you're questioning what it is, take it with a grain of salt at this point as yeah. far as it having an overall performance on what you do as a hobbyist. Yeah. Don't, don't obsess over it. If you're going to engage in IR, baseline the numbers on a pack that's new, so you have some kind of baseline. It's a brand new pack. You know what's going on. And then compare it over time. Sure. If you just take a battery you think may be giving you trouble, and you out of the random check the IR, um, and it gives you 3 milliohm or 6 milliohm on the yep. battery, and the battery is 2 years old or 3 years old, um, okay, you've got a mark on, you've got a level on a dipstick, but you have no idea where that came exactly. from. Exactly. Did it increase? Did it, did it, it's never yep. going to decrease, but... How relative is that change? Well, that's how the thing. is how significant is the number six when you never established that it started off with a number three? Yeah. Um, if it started off with three, six is actually three. That's not so bad. No. If it started off no. with four and a six, it's actually two. That's not so bad. No. You know, from an increase in, in uh, resistance. So. You know, a good metaphor, as dumb as this might sound, is if the bucket holds water, keep using the bucket. Don't take it to a high high end machine to figure out if the metal's fatiguing in a certain area that it's going to start losing water. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it is with the batteries. If they're working fine, everything is functioning normal, yeah. don't, don't look for a problem. And I think I, IR can cause you to look for that it, problem it, that's not it there. It certainly can. And there's, yeah. I think we represent the opposite ends of the spectrum, too. You would never, ever check IR. No. I'll check IR. I'll use it as a baseline. You will because you, you'll use the information because 
you have more knowledge of it and that interests you. Mm -hmm. Personally, it doesn't interest me. Um, I'm going to just keep doing what I do with lipos in the safe manner I've always done for years and not worry about it. And that's exactly it. Yep. You, can, you can choose to engage however exactly. you, you want to yeah, engage. Yeah, exactly. The important thing no is maybe you right. gathered out of this is, is how to use IR if you sure. want to use IR and, and uh, how to baseline your data so you've got something work, yep. you know, usable to work with. So. Um, you can check out more information on our site, RC Overstock. You take a look at our Connect section under the Knowledge Base. We have some more information about batteries out there. Uh, of course, if you have any question on any of the chargers that we sell, what, can it check IR, what does it do, any of the things mm -hmm. that maybe questions we spawn today in the video, feel free to reach out to us through your customer center or drop us an email at support at rcoverstock.com. I'm Kurt. And I'm Rob. Thanks for watching.